This is Byron Gordon for the SES Conference Channel, and we are at SES Chicago 2010 talking with Avinash, our keynote for this morning. Avinash, you said something that raised a few eyebrows. Uh, the Mormon Church knows SEO. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I was, um, I love using tag clouds to visualize tons and tons of keywords, thousands and thousands of keywords. And so I was looking for many different examples to show that. And so, of course, I showed my own blog's tag cloud so you can understand if you have the right balance between brand and category terms. Is there diversity in your category terms so you can attract a lot of people who don't know your brand, things like that. And so I used um, Chase Bank as an example, BlackBerry as an example, and I thought, what could be a, a sort of off the normal example? And so I. I um, I've searched for the word church, and the LDS church ranks number one on Google for the word church. <laughs> and so I said, okay, I'm going to go to compete and get their data and create this tech cloud. And, and I was so surprised that um, they, have a, they have done a marvelous job, as you reflect on their tech cloud, of doing great SEO. I think that it is, if, if you, especially if you understand something about the church, you'll, you'll start to see that the words that they were trying to get people to associate with them are actually highlighted bigger, and the words they're trying not are highlighted smaller. So, so again, it wasn't about sort of endorsing one religion or another. It was just that we could learn from the SEO work that the LDS Church has done. And, and because you could see that LDS has done a great job, but some of our examples I used of real companies actually stink at this thing. <laughs> um, so it was just a way to, to motivate people to do more. And uh, you were talking about in terms of analyzing keyword data, there tends to be too much of a fixation on those first 10 lines. Exactly. exactly. Could you elaborate about that? Sure. So, so one of the problems we all suffer in the search world is that um, there are only so many rows of data that we can see physically with our eyes. So you log into Omniture, Google Analytics, whatever, and you can only see so many rows of data because of the limitation of our eyes. And what we end up doing typically is look at 10, 20 rows of data. That's just the head. That's just the top term, 10, 12 terms bringing a lot of traffic to your site. The real magic is in the long tail. Right? And, and in the tail exists tens and thousands and thousands of keywords that individually only bring one, two, three, four visits to a site. So. By, by, by recommending people to move beyond the top 10 rows and use the visualization strategies that I out, outlined today, you know, intelligence and uh, tag clouds and keyword trees and uh, logical sorts, all of those strategies are to say, if, if there are 50,000, 100,000, 500,000 keywords bringing traffic to your site, it is possible for you to visualize them on a page. <laughs> and, and it completely transforms the way you think about this because in one of the cases that I used in my, in my um, presentation today, it turns out that um, only one word dominates their entire tag cloud, just one word, and that's their brand name. And it shows that this company sucks because, because if you look at the top 10, 20 rows, you would not know actually they suck because that brand term will appear in every single one of the top 10 rows. That's the way search works. But then below the surface, the thing you can't see also just has that word. And you realize that all they're doing is attracting people who know their brand, have made up their mind to do business with this company to the site. They're not attracting anybody who is sort of upper funnel or anybody who's just considering buying a phone, things like that. So, 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 so to me, um, one of the key strategies to win at search, organic and paid, is not playing the head game really well, but playing the tail game really well. Again, both organic and paid search. And the limitation tends to be we can't see enough data because there's a lot of keywords in the tail. So to use advanced visualization techniques to bring all the data onto a page, because that gives you such a great glimpse into your success or failure at search very, very effectively. And finally, uh, to know if your SEO efforts are bearing fruit, you said you had to quantify the economic value. Exactly. Just tell our viewers again how important that is. Absolutely. So most websites in the world are not connected to e-commerce, right? So there's no add to cart button or buy now button or whatever, right? And for even for, But even for those sites, the average conversion rate in the United States for the top 50 sites tends to be around 2%. 98% of the people are never going to convert. <laughs> and then if you think about content-only sites, you know, but somebody just asked me a question about law firms or, or the church site or so many other sites, mm -hmm. uh, CNN.com, whatnot, there's 0% conversion. I mean, it's just content. So the thing that I am encouraging people to do is to morph away from simply using revenue as an outcome or a conversion rate as an outcome mm -hmm. and, and move to thinking about economic value. This is a term that I've started to use a lot since the last year. And what the economic value is quantifying what value was added to the business for every job the site is trying to do. 
And so in the example I used for Bank of America, a, a macro conversion, direct revenue conversion, is the fact that somebody came and opened a checking account. Boom, not, not, not hard to track. You know exactly yep. what the lifetime value is, what not, right? Yep. But when you think about the Bank of America side, that's just revenue. What about the economic value? Because on the Bank of America side, I can sign up for a health savings account. I can sign up for an IRA account. I can sign up for a safe pass. I can actually watch all their videos, free advertising for them. I can, I can submit a lead. I can research the local branches. I can actually uh, figure out what the loan rates are. Now, every single thing I'm doing, all those little micro conversions I'm doing, are adding value to Bank of America. And yet, most of the time, we never track those things. And, and, and not to say the Bank of America is not, just that we in the world would never track all those micro conversions. And, and so, one first step is to identify all the jobs the site is trying to do and track those micro conversions. But the second part is where really the, 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 the sort of amazing, awesome things happen, which is you quantify the value of each of these things. So, for example, if Bank of America knows if you sign up for online banking, that the length of the time you will spend as a customer for the bank will increase by X number of years, because mm -hmm. it's convenient. Bank of America knows that if you apply for a health savings account, they make this much profit. If you sign up for a debit card, here's a lifetime value. If you, watch the, if, you wa if you go and watch the Ken Burns advertisements on the Bank of America site, they know what it costs to get you to watch that video on TV, that ad on TV. Now you can say, well, people are coming to the site and watching that ad. I know what the value yeah, is, the value. I know what the cost is that I saved. So, so by identifying the value each of these micro conversions is adding to the business, you can compute the complete economic value of the site. And it's the revenue from the micro conversion plus all these little values from the micro conversions. You understand the economic value and now you're so much smarter about telling the people on top of us, your boss and my boss, our website's economic value is this. And you can do this for an e-commerce, non-e-commerce, for-profit church, all kinds of sites. And then your boss will, of course, love you and kiss you a lot because <laughs> you've quantified something they didn't understand before. But the more interesting thing is now they can use that to say, if I do organic search, I get this much revenue, but I'm getting this much economic value. And they can make much more intelligent decisions. And that's the thing that I encourage people to do. Brilliant SEO insight, Avinash, yes. as always. Thank you so much. Thank you, Byron. And there's more to come from SES Chicago 2010. Stay tuned for more.